So, Peter, tell me about your background, your family, oh, um, where they came from, where they yes. grew up. Uh, my father and mother came from the island of Kithera in Greece. Uh, my father came here in 1908, and mother came uh, later in the 20s. Um, she was only 17 when they got married, and father put her age up, because you could do it those days, there were no records or anything. And uh, yes, and I was born in Armadale. Mm. So you grew up as a as a country kid. As a country kid, yeah. yeah. And, and when did you move to the Big Smoke? Ah, <laughs> wasn't till after the war. Yes, uh, I was. Um, I, uh, I, all of us at school couldn't wait to get to 18 to, <laughs> to enlist. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, when we went away, um, I came back for a couple of years, um, drank too much, smoked <laughs> too much, did all the <laughs> things I shouldn't have done. What about the women? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you mustn't discuss that. <laughs> no one else is listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, uh, so, because my dad was missed the war by two years, yeah. and he was devastated because he wanted to join the RAAF, <laughs> and he yeah. learned as a 16-year-old how to fly yeah. and was ready to join, and then yeah. um, the war ended. And so for that generation, going yeah. to war was obviously yeah. um, an, an adventure as much as it was a duty. I tried to enlist as a, as a tail gunner because... Um, I I didn't have enough brains to fly, <laughs> so so I actually was on the ground staff um, and uh, with a Spitfire squadron at uh, Moratai, mm. yes, and um, then um, there were a, a lot of Americans there. We had squ uh, squadrons of bombers and fighters, all American, and we had a whole d uh, division of uh, American, um, I don't know what you call them, Negroes, Blacks, whatever, a whole division which is 4,000 men in one one place where we're just near their camp. And um, yes, I saw a few things there. Yeah. And you were at, uh, at the surrender at Moratai? General Blamey, Sir General Blamey, took the surrender from the Japanese Imperial Army officers at um, the um, this big oval that was there, and uh, uh, I was one of <laughs> the the group of surrounding it. You never know. <laughs> As protection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, it was um, it was a momentous occasion. I. I I didn't know that that was history and all this sort of thing at the time. And w when the war ended, um, we just said um, words to the effect of, thank goodness, it's over now, let's get home. Yeah, mm -hmm. and because um, the streets of Sydney were, were alive with celebrations at yes. the end of the war. Well, we, we didn't go on like that. Uh, we did get drunk. <laughs> 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 and. Uh, I woke up in the morning and there were bodies all over the place in the, uh, lying down and uh, you know we got tropical rain that night and they're in puddles of water and everything uh, and then the Americans started shooting off their small arms uh, and the anti-aircraft guns started going off you know in the celebration uh, we couldn't stop them <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I stood more chance of getting killed on that day by the Americans <laughs> than, than anything else. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, and so when you came back to Australia, it must have been a different place, was it? Oh, it was, yes. Uh, and I, I was um, I was a bit stupid because I would only associate with those that had been away uh, and didn't seem to have anything in common with the others. And um, those days, 
they just threw a civilian suit at you and you had to make your way with whatever happened. There was no, nothing like they have today for the, for the yeah. veterans. Yeah. I had a friend that was a prisoner of war in three and a half years and he just threw him a suit and said, you know, off you go. Yeah. And um, you mentioned that there were people from Gaia and from some of your teachers who were lost during the war. A teacher, our teacher, he was flying Hudson bombers in New Guinea and he disappeared without trace. One of the boys that was in Europe in bomber command disappeared. Uh, we used to write to one another. I hope it's not too rude, but he wrote me one of his last letters and said, we were over Titty Town last night, which was a breast. <laughs> yes, and, uh, and he, he disappeared without trace. And um, in the period since, so you, you stayed in Sydney after the war? No, I, I stayed uh, in Gaira with mum and dad for a little while and then I left to come to Sydney to seek my fame and fortune and I found neither. <laughs> so your mum and dad must have been pretty pleased when you appeared back in Gaira. Oh yes, yes. Well, when they gave me, uh, I remember the final leave, um, it was steam trains those days and it pulled in and mum's holding dad and uh, they're laughing and crying and everything like that and th that was my final leave and I was lucky enough to come back. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, apart from not finding fame and fortune, what did you find in Sydney? Hard work. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I found uh, the, the trying to get a job um, and uh, the sort of jobs that were offering were, um, you know, factories and uh, small goods departments and all this sort of thing, which I didn't want. Uh, and I didn't want anything to do with cafes because I grew up in one. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, anyway, eventually I, I found work at um, Proud's the Jewellers in, uh, uh, I forget, Castle Ray Street, is it? Mm. Yes, yes. And um, uh, I worked there for a couple of years and then uh, I married. Uh, I married a girl whose uh, brother I met uh, at Williamtown in the Air Force and he used to take me to Singleton on weekend leave and uh, uh, I, I worked at Proud for a couple of years then I went to Singleton and we had a restaurant uh, there for uh, oh, about 20 years. Mm. Yeah. And so your parents were typical Greeks in the country, they ran a, a milk bar, did they? Oh, we had a, a milk bar, general store, cafe, you name it, we had it. And I still remember helping father pack bananas in the, in the window, pyramid style like this. <laughs> and it was terribly cold. It was, one morning was uh, 11 degrees Fahrenheit. Which, which ain't warm. And then uh, on top of that, uh, we had um, snow, uh, four feet of snow on the ground. And the branches on the trees would snap and break off with the weight of the snow on them. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, um, I couldn't wait afterwards to get away from the place because it was too cold. <laughs> and you got involved in the RSL? Yes, I joined, I joined the RSL from the word go and uh, the Air Force Association. They've sent me a couple of certificates for being a member for 50 or 60 years, whatever. <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, I've, I've found that uh, 
uh, the, uh, the RSL will help you if they can with different things. And how important was that camaraderie with other veterans over the years? Oh, it was important. Um, I was made an honorary member of the 2nd 7th Infantry Battalion and uh, we used to go every year, lots of drink and lots of fun and everything and then gradually everybody died. There was no one left. Uh, uh, Major General Sandy Pearson, have you ever heard of him? I have indeed. Yeah, a great man and a, a, a real officer and gentleman, a wonderful man. Anyway. Uh, uh, I used to sit with him and he'd, uh, he'd say, and, uh, well, you Air Force chaps. <laughs> and uh, uh, then, uh, then the, whole, the whole battalion died. And uh, in uh, the 79 squadron, the, our commanding officer was uh, a man called... Uh, Ken James, and uh, we used to call him Skeeter, <laughs> and uh, everyone's gone now. So I'm still around, which, <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, despite, yeah. despite the, the, the drinking and the smoking, oh. you're obviously still very healthy at 94. What's, <laughs> well, what's been the secret? <laughs> I, I wouldn't be dead for quids. <laughs> 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 and, and tell me, did you ever get back to your family's um, um, heritage to Kithra or to Greece? No, I'm one of the few that's never gone because uh, when I could go, I was I, I didn't want to even go to Manly uh, when I came back. I, I wanted to stay home. I, I believe home's the best place on earth. And anyway, I would I would have gone, but. Uh, if I go now, I want four-star, five-star hotels and hot and cold running servants, you know. <laughs> oh, hot and cold running servants or water? <laughs> How, how's your Greek? Uh, well, thanks to my mother. My father only spoke English to us, and he was a real um, Churchill man. And uh, my mother never mastered uh, English properly, and... Uh, she'd be close, but not quite. And uh, uh, I, I learned, uh, uh, I think you could call it a bushy sort of Greek from my mother. But if I was in Greece, I'd get around all right yeah. and I'd be able to speak. Um, not too badly. Yes, I'd, uh, I should have gone, but, you know, well, I have uh, done those things I ought not to have done. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's never too late. Maybe this is a project for the family, I think. So, but obviously on a five-star trip. <laughs> just, oh, yes. Just don't go on a cruise yeah. at the moment. Well, Peter, can I say that, um, as I said before, uh, Australians are just so incredibly grateful for what you and your generation did for our nation. And... Um, we faced a moment of extraordinary peril as a country, uh, yeah. both for the loss of our democratic values with Nazism, um, but also obviously the real risk of invasion from the Japanese. And um, none of us, uh, apart from you, would be here today if it wasn't for the actions that you and your, your peers took. And we are a grateful nation for your service. Well, I was, I was very lucky uh, to have survived and um, uh, lucky uh, with the different things. I had sicknesses, malaria and all that stuff. Um, to have survived and come through it. And um, I feel grateful. And most of all, I feel grateful for my family because they are a loving family. If you haven't got a loving family, you've got nothing. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, and thanks for having us here today. Thank you. Yeah.